From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Dan Mapes, New York Police Department, Mr. Dollar. Oh, hi. I just went over your statement to the officers who went to the scene of the shooting. Pretty rough business. Yeah. How's the girl? She hasn't regained consciousness. We've got to get on with this, Dollar. There's some questions I want to ask you. Sure. Glad to do what I can. Where can I meet you? What's the matter with right here at headquarters? Okay. Say in about an hour? Make it a half an hour. I said I want to get on with the case. Room 212, Sergeant Daniel Mapes. Okay, Sergeant. I'll be there. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Four State Insurance Company, Wilmington, Delaware. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Todd matter. A burglary that occurred six months ago, but the murder try occurred only a few hours ago. Expense account item six, $16.40, one telegram. From me to Chief Investigator Don Freed, Four State Insurance. I explained events up to date and requested that Freed contact their New York office and employ counsel for me in the event the New York police chose to hold me as a material witness in the shooting of Gloria Tierney. Ah, uh, we aren't going to hold you. Why should we? I don't know. Why should you? Sit down. Take it easy. Okay, thanks. So, uh, you're a freelance insurance investigator. Yeah, that's right. Working for four state out of Wilmington, huh? That's right. Okay, suppose you give it to me. Well, you got it right in front of you there in that report. I told it to the investigating officers right after the shooting last night. Uh, now you tell it to me. All right. I made an appointment to meet this girl. She called me about 12 o'clock midnight, and I went on over to her apartment. Uh huh? She wasn't around when I got there, so I waited and talked to her landlady. A few minutes later, I saw her coming across the street. I went over to meet her because she looked like she'd been hurt or something. Mm. I walked her back across the street. Somebody pulled up in a car just as we got to the curb. It says here, Black Caddy, 1955 Coupe de Ville. Yeah, I didn't pay too much attention. What was the license number? Couldn't tell. It was blacked out. Okay, go on. There was a man in it. I didn't see his face. Didn't even notice him, really. He... Well, he just started shooting. The girl was hit three times. I was trying to help her, and he got away. Well, what else? That's it. Okay. Tell me why you were in here yesterday afternoon, checking to see if this Gloria Tierney had a record. I was about to contact her. I wanted to know if she'd ever been in trouble. Now, tell me what you're working on. The Todd case. Todd? Yeah, a burglary out in Long Island about six, seven months ago. I had reason to believe the girl might be able to help me on it. Hmm. Because of what? Because of her mink coat. Well, I'm glad you answered that way, Dollar. The coat's in the lab now. They're looking it over. We found it listed in our stolen property files. So far, your story is okay, but believe me, it isn't over yet. Huh? Tell me more. We know about the coat. We want to know about the girl who was wearing it. <sighs> Sorry, I can't help you. We didn't have her prints on file here, but we sent them off to Washington. She's still unconscious. She's in pretty bad shape. She can't talk. You can. What's her angle? I don't know. You don't know who shot her. You didn't get the license number. You just stood there and let it happen. All you were interested in was your mink coat. Look, I Is that what you're trying to tell me? I might be through trying to tell you anything, pal. Don't get smarty pants with me, Dollar. I got myself a shooting to straighten out. I'll straighten it out any way I can. What else did she have in the Todd business? You tell me. Nothing. A small diamond ring on a little finger. It's not on the stolen property list. Tell me, Dollar, did your insurance company pay off this claim? Yes, the whole thing. About 75000 75000 That's right. Well, at least you got the coat back. Even if it has got three bullet holes in it. Maybe we'll get a line on the whole job. If she regains consciousness. Meanwhile, you can sit here and tell me about your tip. What? Who put you on to Gloria Tierney? No, no, I'm, I'm afraid I can't tell you that. Why not? Because I promised not to disclose any names. Oh, for... I can tell you this much, though. The man who told me about Gloria Tierney couldn't possibly have had anything to do with the Todd case. He was in prison when it happened. Let's have his name so I can check it. He's in Indiana now. He's got a name in Indiana. What is it? Sorry. You going to sit there and tell me he gave you a name to start with and that's all you bought? Yep. Suppose I told you I don't believe anything. 
And then I think I'll hold you for a while until you forget about whatever deal you made with an ex-con. Well, suppose I told you that a lawyer for my insurance company is on his way down here right now just to see that I get treated right. <laughs> What's funny? You. You insurance guys. You know what? You give me a pain. Right here. We went on like that a little while. Then I accompanied Sergeant Mapes to Gloria Tierney's apartment. A full crew of technicians were there giving the premises a complete check. Mapes dispatched two sets of detectives to cover the neighborhood for possible witnesses to the shooting. Another pair began to cover the apartment house itself. I went with Mapes to talk to the manager, Mrs. Stromberg. She looked white and shaken. You remember, Mr. Dollar? Yes. Hello, Mr. Dollar. How's poor Gloria? Not very good, Mrs. Stromberg. She's still unconscious. And we're still pretty much in the dark about all this, Mrs. Stromberg. Where is she? What hospital? I'd like to go see her. Maybe there's something I can do. Best thing you can do is try to help us find out who shot her. She's at the police emergency hospital right now, Mrs. Stromberg. I'll have them phone you when she can see people. Thank you. Oh, what an awful thing. She... Well, what's it all about? Why would anyone want to shoot Gloria? We hope we can ask her that question. Right now, we're going to try to find out all we can, and maybe you can help us. Well, I hope so. What can I tell you? Where she worked, how she lived, what people she knew. Oh, dear. Yesterday, you told me you'd known her for a year. Yes, ever since she moved in. All right. Was she a nice girl? Of course she was a nice girl. Quiet, minded her own business. Where does she work at? Well, I don't know. I mean, Gloria doesn't work as far as I know. Who pays her rent? She always gave me a check. Who gave her a check? Well, I really don't know. I just... Don't you know anything? What's the matter with you? Well, I'm trying. Mapes, no. why don't you go sit down? All right, I'll sit down here. Mrs. Stromberg, what can you tell us about her? Do you know how we can contact her family? Think about it. Well, I don't know. I know they live in California somewhere, but that's all I do know. She talked about them now and then. Uh-huh. How about her friends here in town? What about them? Well, for instance, the man who drove the black Cadillac last night. I never saw that car around here before. Did she talk about her friends to you? Why, no. Well, she's a pretty girl, young. Boyfriends? Oh, yes, she did talk about them now and then. Do you suppose one of them had something to do with this? Mrs. Stromberg, some guy pulled up in a black caddy last night and pumped three slugs into her. She acted funny before that, according to you. Run out when she was supposed to meet Dollar here. Don't you know if any of her friends drove a car like that? No. You know this, but you don't know that. What kind of a friend were you? What? What kind of a friend were you? That girl's lying in a hospital right now. She's got a slug here, another one here, and here. They've operated twice. You weep and holler and stand around wringing your hands about her, but you won't open your mouth about helping us find who did it. Now, let's start with that car again. You've got the front apartment here. You can see the street from those two windows. Have you ever seen that black caddy here before? Yes. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? Whose is it? I don't know. I mean, I don't know his full name. Well, what do you know about him? His name is Bill something. <laughs> Bill something. Yes. That's a big help. What does he look like? Where does he work? What does he do? I don't know. I really don't know. She never introduced me to him, but she talked about him. She'd say, Bill's coming by tonight, or Bill did this, or Bill did that, but she never mentioned his last name. But he drove the caddy. Yes. Now, what does he look like? I told you, she never introduced me. I heard that part. But I know if someone young and fresh and pretty like Gloria Tierney lived across the hall from my wife, my wife would be at the window every time she heard the bell ring or heard a car drive up out front. She'd want to see who was buying her the candy and flowers, who was knocking on the door. Isn't that so, Mrs. Stromberg? Yes. I mean, no. Yes. Well, what do you mean? Uh... Now, look. For the third time, what does this guy Bill look like? Well, he's tall and very dark. Tall? What does that mean? Tall like me? Tall like Dollar? Tall like what? Like Mr. Dollar. How old? How'd he dress? What kind of bill? Easy, easy, Mapes. Why don't you go through that offering me to sit down part now? All right, all right. I was wrong about you, Mapes. I admit it. Well, maybe I was kind of wrong about you, Dollar. Hardly anybody ever admits anything these days. Okay. I'm sorry I'm raising my voice, Mrs. Stromberg. But tell us about the man, all you can remember about Bill. Heavy, light? A husky fella, and he dressed very nicely, too. What color was his hair? Dark, I think. He always wore a hat. How about his eyes? I don't know. Uh -huh. About how old would you say? Oh, 30, maybe 35. I, I'm not very good at ages. 
How often did he come here to see her? Oh, once or twice a week. Gloria's been going with him? Yes. Did she ever mention where he works or what he does? No, no, she never mentioned that. Do you have any idea how long she's known him? How long she's been going with him? Well, I have no idea. I just know he's been coming to see her ever since she moved in here. This, uh, Bill, would you say he had money, Mrs. Stromberg? Yes, I'd say so. He drove that big, expensive car and always dressed so nice. And, of course, he gave Gloria that coat. The mink coat? Yes. Oh. Do you know if he ever gave her any jewelry? I don't know. I don't think so. Gloria would usually run across the hall and show me when he gave her something. Mostly they were small gifts, candy, and things like that. But I don't remember if he ever gave her any jewelry. Did he ever bring any friends here? I don't know. All right. Was Gloria going to marry him? Oh, she never talked about it. You sure about that? Yes, she never said, and I never asked. Why? Why not? Well, I don't know. I never asked her. I wanted to, but I never asked her. You think right away I've been a busybody watching that girl and so on. Well, yes, I watched her from time to time, and I was her friend here. But there are some things we just didn't talk about. There sure were. Well, as you ask me questions, I realize how much we didn't talk about. I can't tell you where she came from or where her family is or who Bill is or what she planned for the future. I just know she was a nice, decent, honest sort of a girl. Yes, we got that impression, Mrs. Stromberg. Anything you want to ask, Dollar? No, no, no. My uh, apologies again for raising my voice. Thank you for the information, Mrs. Stromberg. Hmm. Come on, Dolly. Okay. Goodbye. 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 Well, you got it out of her. Yeah, but I don't trust her. It took too much work. Are you really as tough as you look? Sure. <laughs> You're a good cop, Mapes. <laughs> Thanks. I like to have somebody mention that every five years. Well, better get out this guy's description. Yeah. Now, there's a hall phone right there. Uh-huh. Well, we sure haven't got much to go on. Communications, please. There's Dan Mapes. I want an APB out on... What? Oh, I'll give it to you later. Johnny, the uh, hospital phoned in two minutes ago. Gloria. Yes. They think she's dying. There'll be another intriguing episode in our story of the Todd matter tomorrow. Tomorrow, I take some lessons from a good policeman on how to find out what has to be found out. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure and join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs> <laughs>